Hello, this is ratio and proportion lesson 1.1. In this, I will discuss questions on ratio. Now, what you have to do, you have to first pause the video and try to solve each and every question of this topic or this lesson first by yourself. Then look at the way I have solved. So, first question is incomes of the uh, A and B are in the ratio 4 is to 5. So, in how I, in which way exam we have to solve income we can take. Uh, we know that whenever the two numbers are in ratio, income in the ratio 4 is to 5. So, we can take the income as 4x and 5x. Expenditure of both A and B are in the ratio 5 and 6. So, 5y and 6y, I can take the expenditure. Why not x? Because expenditure will be different from the income. So, it can be, uh, constant terms can be different. So, for, we will take 5y and 6y. Find the ratio of their savings if A saves one fourth of his income. Now, what will be the saving? Savings, we know that this is income minus expenditure. This is 4x minus 5y. This is 5x minus 6y. This is what the ratio we need to calculate. But we don't know x and y. How to calculate? So, something else is given that A saves one fourth of his income. A saves, A savings is one fourth of A income. We know that. What is the A saving? A saving is 4x minus 5y. What is one fourth of A income is 4x. That is, you will get x. So solving this you will get 3x is equals to 5y you have to put the values in this so our saving ratio was saving ratio was 4x minus 5y divided by 5x minus 6y so what you will get this is 20 by 3y i'm putting the value of x as 5 by 3y minus 5y and this is 25 by 3y minus 6y this you will get 15y by 3 after solving 5y by 3 not 15y by 3 and this you will get 7y by 3 so ratio will be 5 is to 7 the ratio of their savings will be 5 is to 7 and this way you have to solve these kind of question in exam and that was a conceptual way i have solved this question in a conceptual way how can you solve this question in a logical way i can solve this question in a much uh, lesser time by applying the logic what the question says that income of a and b in the ratio 4 is to 5 and expenditure in the ratio 5 is to 6 a saves one fourth of his income so i will assume income such that it will be easy for me to find the one fourth of that number so i will take the income ratio is i know that 4 is to 5 so i will take the ratio as 4, 40 and 50 you can see that the ratio of income is in 4 and 5 40 and 50 you can take why 40 because one fourth of 40 is easy to calculate so savings, I know that A saves one fourth of his income. So a, saving of A would be 10. Expenditure ratio is given to me 5 and 6. So I will take as 5Y and 6Y. Now A, we know that A income is 40. We know that A saving is 10 because A saves one fourth of his income. What will be the expenditure? You know that income minus expenditure is saving. So what should be the expenditure so that the saving is 10 by common sense the expenditure must be 30 then only the saving is 10 if you are earning 40 rupees you are saving only 10 it means that your expenditure is 30 so 5y is 30 5y is 30 what is y y is 6 so 6y would become 36 now for b b was earning 50 rupees he is spending 36 so his saving is 14 what is the ratio of their saving 10 is to 14 5 is to 7 and this way you can calculate the answer under 30 seconds and that is the advantage of common sense logic second question is the ratio of the present age of husband and wife is 6 is to 5 we know that how to convert the ratio into numbers so i will assume that husband age is 6x and wife age is 5x now what the question says that what would be the possible ratio of their ages 30 year hence? 30 year hence husband age would be 6x plus 30. Wife age would be 5x plus 30. We need to calculate the possible ratio. This possible ratio. Now what we will do? We will take 6 common. This will left x plus 5. We will take 5 common. This will I will left with x plus 6. Now I know that 6 by 5 is 1.2. This is x plus 5 upon x plus 6. Now x is a positive integer because we have multiplied the ratio by some constant and that is always positive. So x is a positive integer. Now I need to check whether this fraction is more than 1 or less than 1. I know that denominator is more than the numerator. 
I know that x plus 6 will be always be greater than x plus 5 when x is positive. So denominator is more than the numerator. So whenever denominator is more than the numerator and both are positive, the fraction is always less than 1. If you take 8 by 9, both are number are positive, denominator is more than the numerator. So this fraction is less than 1. 9 by 13 is also less than 1. 11 by 19 is also less than 1. So all such fractions where numerator is more less than the denominator or you can say that denominator is more than the numerator the fraction is always less than 1 it will lies between 0 and 1 so if you multiply it something with less than 1 so final answer will be less than 1.2 uh, why it is less than 1.2 because if you multiply let's say 8 by something less than 1 if you multiply it 8 by 0.9 this is less than 1 final answer will be less than 8 you will get 7.2 which is less than 8 8 into 0.7 5.6 which is also less than 8. So 1.2 into something less than 1, you will get your final answer will be in the form which is less than 1.2. So we need to check the option because we are the question is asking about the possible ratio, not exact ratio. So I'm checking 1 by 1. 1 is 5 by 4. Second option was 9 by 7. Third was 9 by 8. 7 by 5 and 6 by 5. So 5 by 4, I know that this is 1.25. This won't be my answer. I want my ratio after 30 years will be less than 1.2 so 9 by 7 this is also more than 1.2 1.2 plus if you can calculate this won't be my answer 9 by 8 this will equal to 1.125 and that will be my final answer because this is the ratio which is less than 1.2 you don't need to check the other one this is 1.4 this won't be my answer this is 1.2 this also won't be my answer because answer should be less than 1.2 that will be my final answer and that would be the possible ratio of their ages after 30 years third question is the ratio between the ages of a woman and her daughter is 9 is to 5 we know that we can assume the women and daughter a woman is we can assume as 9x and daughter is as 5x the woman was 26 year old when old when she gave birth to her only son so women daughter and son when son was born his age was 0 and women is what 26 years old the question says that the women was 26 year old when she gave birth to her only son if her daughter is 6 year older to her son it means that when son was 0 daughter was 6 year old find the present age of the women now we know that the difference between the age of any two person is always same difference between the age of Amitabh Bachchan and Abhishek Bachchan is always same. The difference between the ages of two persons is always same. You can see that the difference between the age of women and daughter is 20 years. It will always be 20 years. Very important concept. The difference between the age of any two person is always same. So we know that. We know the age of women. We know the age of daughter. The difference of their age is 9x minus 5x is always be 20 years. So can I say that 4x is 20 and x is equals to 5. What was the question? The question was the present age of women. Present age of women will be 9x. That is 9 into 5, 45 will be my final answer. So you can solve this question under 30 seconds in exam. Question 4 is Mr. Dharma Singh has 6 sons named Tarun, Suresh, Mahesh, Naresh and Rahul Varun. He took chocolates for all of them which he distributed among them such that Tarun received twice the number of chocolates by received by Suresh, thrice of Mahesh, five times of Naresh, eight times of Rahul and nine times of Varun. What is the minimum number of chocolates Mr. Dharma Singh would have brought so that all his son get an integral number of chocolates? Where, where it is very important, integral number of chocolates. Now how to solve this question in a faster manner? Uh, can I say that uh, let's say the number of chocolates received by Tarun is T twice of Suresh that is 2s so number of chocolate by Tarun is twice of s s means the number of chocolate received by Suresh Tarun received twice the number of chocolates by Suresh and this is equal to three times the same Tarun got three times of Mahesh m is the number of chocolates by Mahesh five times of Naresh n is the number of chocolates of Naresh eight times the number of chocolate of Rahul r and 9 times the number of chocolates by Varun. All these are equal. Now, we have given that 
the each person uh, received an integral number of chocolates. So I will assume all this equal to such a number which will give me the value of T, S, M, N, R and V a integral number. Let's say this equals to K. Now what should be K? Can I say that K should be divisible by 2, 3, 5, 8 and 9 because 2S will be K. S will be K by 2. Can I say that S will be K by 2? So can I say that K must be divisible by 2 as well as 3 as well as 5, 8 and 9. So what is the number which is divisible by 2, 3, 5, 8 and 9? Here I will calculate the LCM. I will calculate the LCM of 2, 3, 5, 8, 9 which is equal to 360. So I assume that the number of chocolates are 360x. I won't take 360, I, won't, I will take 360x because it could be any multiple of 360. So let's assume that this all is equal to 360x. Now why 360x? Because it will help me to receive all values in integral form. So what would be t? Can I say that t would be 360x? 2s is equal to 360x. What will be s? s is 180x. This is 360x. 3m is 360. What is m? m would be 120x. 5n is equal to 360x. n would be 72x. 8R is equal to 360x, R would be 45x, 9V is equal to 360x, V would be equal to 40x. Now these are the number of chocolates received by Tarun, Suresh, Mahesh, Naresh, Rahul and Varun. Add this, what you will get? These are total number of chocolates received by all of them. If you will add, you will get 817x. These are total chocolates received by all the sons together. Now what the question says that what is the minimum number of chocolate that Mr. Dharma Singh would have brought? For minimum number of chocolates we can take x as 1 because this number will be equal to minimum 360. It could be 360 into 2, it could be 360 into 3 but x can be minimum as 1. So total number of minimum number of chocolate that father must have brought is 817 and that will be our final answer. Now you can see that this question won't take more than a minute. In exam to solve. Only thing you have to do, you have to assume a number which is divisible by 2, 3, 5, 8 and 9 that is 360 or multiple of 360. So I have taken that number as 360x. Question 5 is there are 5 glasses of the same capacity. The glasses are filled with water such that the ratio of the quantity of water in 5 glasses. The ratio is 3 is to 4 is to 5 is to 6 is to 7. That is the quantity of water. So I you know how to convert the ratio into numbers multiply by constant. So first glass, second glass, third glass, fourth glass and fifth glass. I am taking the quantity as 3x, ml, 4x, 5x, 6x and 7x. These are the quantity of water present in the five glasses. Now what the question is that the glasses are of same capacity and the total quantity of water in five glasses is three fifth of the total capacity of the five glasses. So in this in this kind of question it's better to assume the total capacity of each glass because we are not asking how much water exactly is there. We are asking how many glasses have at least half of their capacity filled with water. So we'll assume that the capacity of each glass we will assume that the capacity of each glass is equal to 100 ml. So total capacity of all the Five glasses would be how much? Total capacity of each glasses is of 100 ml. We have five glasses. So total capacity will be 500 ml. Now what the question is that total quantity of water, total quantity, Q, T, Q, W, total quantity of water, T, Q, W stands for total quantity of water in five glasses. This is equals to three fifth of the total capacity. Three fifth of total capacity is 500 ml. Can I say that is equals to 300 ml? So now I know that the total quantity of water in 5 glasses is 300 ml. We also know that the quantity of water in 5 glasses is this much. So if you add this, this is the total quantity of water. This is also the total quantity of water in 5 glasses. This is also the total quantity of water in 5 glasses. If you add this, this will be equal to 25x. Now both of these will be equal because both are same. This is also the total quantity of water in 5 glasses. This is also the total quantity of water in 5 glasses. So 25x is equal to 300 ml. x would be 12 ml. 
now you can calculate the quantity of water in each and every glass so first glass it would be you know the value of x put the value of x this will be 36 ml this would be 48 ml this would be 60 ml this would be 72 ml and this would be 84 ml now what the question says that question says that how many glasses have at least half of their capacity filled with water we know that the capacity of each glass was 100 ml so half of it would be 50 ml how many of these glasses are filled with more than half 1 2 and 3 third fourth and fifth glass so answer is 3 so answer is 3 3 glasses are there which have at least half of their capacity filled with water third fourth and fifth so that was all about ratio and proportion lesson one questions on ratio the objective of this lesson was to solve the question in least possible time without cramming without memorization of formula only with common sense concept and simplification speed thank you